Hybrid beamforming optimization can be tricky to visualize. So let's think about a standard beamforming scenario. We've got a constellation point X, we've got two antennas, each one has an amplifier, and there's an intended user at a certain angle. And of course, the path length is different from the two antennas. So if we just sent that constellation point directly off each antenna, it would be received with a phase difference along those two paths when it gets to that receiver. So we can represent this in matrix form in the following way. Here we've got our path phase from antenna one, and we're gonna give that a reference of zero phase. And then off antenna two, there will be a phase difference, which is due to the angle that that user is in. Now, here's what we can do in our transmitter is we can take our constellation point and we can multiply it by phase rotators to pre-cancel the phase rotation that's gonna happen from the channel. So here we've got the channel, we call it capital H, this is the channel matrix, and here we've got our pre-compensation. In this case, it's a vector. Now, I think you can see that if we choose that vector that we are going to implement in our transmitter, if we choose it to be this form here, where the first element is a one and the second element has a phase rotation that is the negative of the phase rotation that's going to happen on that path when it goes into the channel, then you can see that by multiplying these two matrices together, we're going to get two times X. Now, of course, this channel matrix was the one I wrote down for the angle where our intended user is. At other angles, when this phase doesn't match what we're doing in our precompensator, then we're not going to get such a strong signal. And that's what gives us the concept of beam forming. So now we're going to get at other directions, they are not going to add up so strongly and we get this picture that you might be familiar with of a beam shape. Okay, now let's think about when we've got two inputs. So now we're making it more general, we've got two different constellation points and let's say we've got two users. So now we've got another user that is in a different direction. And we would like data constellation point X1 to go to this user, user one here, and we'd like constellation point X2 to go to this user here. And we'd like there to have no interference if possible. So now we've got two aims. Here we had one aim, we wanted to make the signal strong in the direction of interest. Now we've got two aims. We want to make the signal strong in the direction of interest, but we also would like to have no interference between these two. So let's think about how we might do this. So here we've got our channel matrix H, and we could make this, vector, this matrix here be the inverse of H. So when we make our pre-coding matrix equal to the inverse of the channel, we call this zero forcing. Now what's gonna happen here? Let's think about this in terms of this visualizing with this picture here. Well, what's this multiplication of these two matrices and a vector is gonna give you a vector. The first element of the vector is going to be giving you the signal that is gonna be received in the black direction, because that is phi one. The element in the second element of the vector is gonna give us the signal that is gonna be received at in direction phi two, which is the second user. So clearly if this vector here, if this matrix here, our pre-compensation is the inverse of the channel, the multiplication of this will be the identity and clearly on the black, at the black user, you'll only get X1 and at the red user, you'll only get X2. And of course, if the, in different directions at other directions, again, you're going to get a different, uh, gains in those different directions. But interestingly, what we see by doing it this way, because we see that none of X2 is coming in the black direction and none of X1 is coming in the red direction. So that means that we've managed to form a beam where there is a, what we call a null in the direction of the black user. And likewise, the black beam has a null in the direction of the red user. So we've got nulls in this direction and a null in this direction. And we can do this choice if we have total freedom over this W matrix. 
Okay, so now let's think of hybrid beamforming. So now we have a similar structure to what we had before, but now we have the scenario where there are lots of antennas, more antennas than the number of amplifiers. And this is for a whole lot of practical reasons. This is common in millimeter wave communications, for example. And there's a whole nother video on the channel on hybrid beamforming. You can find it in the description below. What it means is that we don't have total freedom in what we do in the matrix like we did over here for the zero forcing. We had total freedom. Uh, we could have amplitudes and phases in this matrix here. But now we've got a matrix here, which is taking in this example, two inputs and converting it into many outputs. This matrix is constrained. This one cannot change the amplitude because there are not amplifiers on each antenna. So this is what we call an analog beamforming matrix. And this is what we call a digital beamforming matrix. So now we have two matrices that we need to optimize. And how do we visualize those? And how do we think of those? Well, let's think in relation to the standard and the zero forcing that we've had before. Let's write the matrix equation for this. We've got the constellation points. We've got our beamforming matrix, just like we had over here. But now we've got this other beamforming matrix, our analog beamforming matrix. And in here, we do not have enough degrees of freedom to fully zero force the channel to get zero interference. So now when we do the optimization, we have to optimize over both of these matrices. Again, our challenge is to maximize the signal in the direction of interest for each user and also minimize the interference between them. We've got two matrices that we need to optimize now. So let's try to visualize this and think about what's happening. So now we can think, let's, let's say, for example, let's say we chose to pick the standard beamformers as columns in this matrix, just like we did in the standard beamforming case. So we don't worry about interference. We're just going to try to maximize the signal strength in the direction of interest. And so then what we're doing is we're forming beams in our direction of interest, but we're not able to, and we're doing this with the analog beamformer, but we're not able to control the side lobes. So in this case now, we are going to have a case where there's interference between the beams, between these analog beams. So we don't have a null anymore in the direction of interest. So along the black direction here, we are going to be getting a component of the red signal. And likewise, in the red direction here, we are going to be getting a component of the black signal because we haven't been able to do full zero forcing because we haven't had full degrees of freedom in this matrix. So now what can we do with this matrix, this digital beamforming matrix? Well, if you, when we see it like this, hopefully it becomes clearer and sort of easy to visualize that what we could do is we could now declare this combination to be the effective channel. So now we include our analog beamformer precoder together with the actual channel matrix, and we call that an effective channel. And then now we can do the same thing we did before, is we can choose the W matrix to be the inverse of this effective channel. Let me put a tilde on the top of it to indicate an effective channel. So to visualize this digital beamformer within the context of hybrid beamforming, Let's multiply out this matrix. And here we get this matrix here. Now we can see that the top row of this matrix is going to be sent on the black beamformer up here. The second row of this matrix is going to be sent on the red beamformer up here. This is analog beamformer number two, the red one. So by doing digital beamforming within the context of hybrid beamforming, we can see what's happening is we are, we are sending sum of x1, the intended constellation point on beamformer one, but we're also now sending sum of x2 on beamformer one. And why are we doing that? Well, that's because we know that there is a side lobe effect from beamformer two. 
So the analog beamformer 2, there's a side lobe effect from this red side lobe here. That is going to be interfering with our signal, our intended signal in this direction. So if we can cancel that, then we would be able to remove that effect. And we're cancelling it in the digital beamformer. So if we choose this value here, the W12, if we choose that such that this component cancels the red component from X2, so X2, X2 that's going out on the red beamformer that's intended for user 2, some of it is coming in here and we're now going to cancel it with this term here. Of course we have to do the same thing in the other direction as well, so on the second beamformer we're sending X2 which is what we want to send but we're also now sending a component of X1. And the reason for that of course is because we know that the side lobe from the black beamformer is going to be giving some interference in this direction from the analog beamformer. So in the digital beamformer we're going to compensate that with an offset, a negative component which will cancel that. And of course they're intimately coupled. You can't do these two things separately because once you do one it affects the other and so on. So therefore we need to solve this and one way to solve it if you do zero forcing is where you get zero interference. By doing that you're going to be getting some hit to your signal in that direction. So W11 will not be as strong as it would have been if you picked the maximum SNR beamformer, digital beamformer in that direction. Um, but it's going to be good for you in terms of minimizing the interference. So hopefully you can see now that the digital beamforming is effectively doing digital beams within the analog beams. That's one way to view it. The analog beams are giving you these beams which are, have residual interference and then you can pre-compensate for that residual interference in the digital beamformer. So if you want an overall optimal result though you really do need to optimize both of these matrices together with the constraint of the magnet, unit magnitude for the analog, uh, not just what I've shown here as one example where we chose standard beamforming and then zero forcing. So hopefully this has given you more insights into hybrid beamforming and visualizing it. And if it has, can you give the video a like? It really helps others to find the video. Um, it, subscribe to the channel for more videos and you can check out the description below. There's a web page with a complete listing in categorized order of all the videos on the channel.